Welcome back, folks. Nearly four years after the pandemic, we're still learning how to live with COVID-19. But there's concern that a new COVID variant could return us to the early days of the pandemic. A study conducted by The Ohio State University shows that Omicron subvariant BA286 may lead to more severe disease. This strain of the virus can fuse to human cells more efficiently and infect cells that line the lower lung. The research also shows this Omicron subvariant is less resistant to vaccines. Recent studies out of Germany and France back the findings from Ohio State's researchers. Physician Dr. Omer Awan joins us now. Dr. Awan, I have to be honest, it's a little difficult to keep up with where we are in the lineage of variants, but I do know that based on recent reporting, JN1 is currently the most widely circulating variant in the U.S. What can you tell us about this variant, how it has mutated, and how it's currently impacting the health landscape across the country? Yeah, well, JN1, the variant is definitely the most uh, prevalent variant right now. It's accounting for about 62% of the Kilby cases that we're seeing here in America as of January 6th. It's a descendant of the BA286 that you mentioned, Christian, and, you know, it's causing disease. And, you know, we're seeing a spike in, you know, hospitalizations, uh, death, ER visits, and it does have more mutations. It has at least 30 to 60 more mutations than the original Delta variant and at least 30 different mutations in the spike protein, which is the outer layer of the virus compared to the Omicron, the first Omicron variant. So, uh, you know, this research is somewhat concerning, but ultimately we don't really know exactly if it's going to cause severe disease. So that's still up in the air and we have to track this very carefully to see what happens. That's really important to know. We don't know if it's going to cause severe disease, but there's a chance that it may. Uh, we mentioned these two new studies on BA286, as we said, it's relative of JN1, showed that there is an increased danger with this variant of the virus, or possibly an increased danger, mainly in the way it can infect the lungs. Can you give us a layman's version of what makes this trait so dangerous to our health? And as you do this, I'm imagining the spike proteins. I'm imagining exactly what this thing looks like. What can you tell us about that? Well, it can be dangerous because it can infect the lower lining of the lower lung. And that means that it can result in pneumonia, which is an infection of the lung. Remember, the Omicron characteristically involved the upper airway. So, you know, potentially even sparing the lung. And we saw that Omicron uh, illness was tend to be more mild. But in this case, like the Delta variant, this can actually infect the lower lining of the lung that can result in pneumonia, infection of the lung, can result in difficulty breathing. And in some patients who have severe disease, they may have to go to the hospital and then be put on a machine in order to breathe. But again, I think it's important to understand that you know, severity of disease is also intimately associated with the natural immunity of the population. So, for example, if you take a look at the Delta variant that does have some similar characteristics to the BA286, yes, there was more severe disease early on during the pandemic, but was that a result of the natural characteristics of the Delta variant or was that because people weren't vaccinated at that time? That's a, that's a big difference. And the same is happening right now. Are the increased hospitalizations and deaths from COVID a result of BA286 or the characteristics of JN1? Or is it because immunity is waning? Because currently, less than 20% of the U.S. adult population has received the newly updated vaccine. Mm -hmm. So immunity yeah. is waning. So it's hard to tease those two things out. With the last 30 seconds, as you said, the CDC reports that vaccination rates remain low for children and adults. What's it going to take to get people protected and vaccinated? To get vaccinated, Christian, that's what it's going to take. I think it's very <laughs> Just to important. get vaccinated. <laughs> to get vaccinated, absolutely. I think we need to curb the misinformation, the disinformation. Vaccinations save lives. They save millions of lives throughout the pandemic, you know, over 14 million, according to some research. Uh, we have to do our due diligence and, you know, staying home if we're sick, washing our hands for 20 seconds, uh, you know, staying away from crowded areas and, you know, even masking in appropriate situations. So if we do all these things, we can keep ourselves and those that we love protected. Dr. Omar Awan, thank you for your time and thank you for making it plain for us. My pleasure. Thanks, Christian. Thank you.